What is up everybody, Scape211 here, and we are doing a comparison video today. I know we've been doing a lot of giveaways and news and updates and stuff, but I want to get back into it and give you a comparison video. This one is actually comparing two top-end long-range builds, two generally sniper builds, and we have the well-known Thanos build, which is the Long Arm 8 and the Railgun 16, and we colored it like our boy Thanos here. And uh, we got the Dual Long Arm 10 build. Now this one I don't think has any name for it, but just to be thematic, I did it in Iron Man style colors. But um, yeah, if you guys have a name for this one, or you think of one, feel free to comment below. But right now we're just gonna call it the Dual Long Arm 10 build. And this is the first time I've actually compared two builds. Usually I've compared mechs or weapons. So this time our criteria is gonna be a little different. We're gonna base it on the availability and damage, which is common, we've done that in other ones. But we're also gonna talk a little bit about how these feel, like when you actually use them out on the field, how good they are, how they play out, um, cause that's gonna play into to how you use each of these builds, of course, all right? so. With that all said, let's get into it. Here we go. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the availability of these weapons. How easily can you get them and what does it cost to maintain them? So the first one we're gonna start out with the Thanos build is the Long Arm 8, and this one actually is quite easy. The easiest of all these weapons to get, it only comes in at 800 XP pretty early in the progress path, and it is only 15,750 credits to unlock. Pretty darn cheap but you do want to invest in it. It starts out at two stars, as you can see. So we're going to want to get this to at least five stars level one. That's probably the base area of where this becomes an end game weapon. So to get there, you're going to want to spend 4,125 A coins and then 464,250 credits. So that's a pretty good chunk of change. Now to be even in comparison to the uh, long arm 10 build, we would want to take this up to six star level one. So if you do that, you're going to end up spending 6,625 A coins and then 914,250 credits. So that is a big chunk of change and that's only one half. And that is actually sadly the easier half for the Thanos build. Now I'm going to go down the progress path and we're going to talk about the railgun, which takes way longer to get to. So that is a major downside to that weapon already, but it ends up way down the progress path. It is the last thing that you can unlock so far in the game and it is 172,800 XP. So it's going to take a long time to get to this weapon and be able to unlock it and to unlock it. Guys, you're gonna have to spend a good chunk of acorns. It is 8,275 acorns to unlock this weapon. That is quite a bit, but it comes at five star level one. So if you're only worried about base level end game, uh, this, this comes ready to go out of the package. So between the two, um, you know, not too bad for that. But if you wanna get it to six star level one, it is going to cost 10,775 A coins. Remember, that's the unlock cost of the over 8,000, and then the level up cost is six star, which is 2,500 A coins. And then you're also going to cost, or it's going to cost you the credits, which is 450,000 credits. So now you want to figure out what your grand total is, right? So your grand total, if you want to go five star level one for the Thanos build in total, is going to be 12,400 A coins and then 464,250 credits. Now that's a lot, but that's only five star level one. If you wanna go all the way to six star level one, you are going to spend 17,400 A coins and then 1,364,250 credits. It is a big chunk of change to do this, but this is like an end game build. So it's kind of expected, but it is a lot to invest in for this build for sure. All right, so now that we've talked about the Thanos build, let's switch over to the dual long arm 10. If we look at the progress path here, we'll go down and this is not too far along. It's not quite as easy as a long arm eight, but it only is a little bit further down. It's 2,500 XP, which takes a little while to get, but it's not too bad. And to unlock this weapon is actually the cheapest. It is 14,500 credits, a little bit cheaper than the long arm eight, probably because it comes as a single weapon. Now to upgrade this, you're going to have to go directly to the six star level one because you are doing a dual copy build. This is the base level. You can't go to five star level one. You have to go to six star level one to get your second copy. So to do that, it is 4,150 A coins and then 914,250 credits. 
that is it though guys i mean that is considerably cheaper when you look at the two i mean even if you're going at the base five star level with the long arm eight and the railgun 16 the thanos build it is still more expensive to do that than to do the six star level one the higher end version of the you know the the long range build here of the long arm 10 um and it's it's like night and day difference here so this is definitely a budget friendly build that's probably because the long arm 10 comes as a single weapon and you have to deal with it as a single weapon you don't get dual copies until you actually get the six star so you're kind of um you know dealing with it now to pay it forward for later and it pays in dividends it's a great long range build and it's considerably cheaper than the alternative that you got here so for the idea of availability i feel like this one's no contest guys this one is it, it's massive cheaper to go with the dual long arm 10 if you're looking for something budget friendly and this is this is the way to go um, so definitely for availability we're gonna give it to the dual long arm 10 build all right the next category we're going to talk about is damage and as you'll notice for all of my weapons we're gonna do this based on six star level three just because all of my weapons are either level two or level three so we can use that damage at six star level three to compare. Now, if we look at the first one here, the long arm eight, its damage per magazine is 33,910. And then its damage per shot is 6,782. If we move over to the railgun, we will see that the first number is our level three number we wanna use. Damage per magazine, 53,253. And then damage per shot, 17,751. All right, so combined, the total for each of those per clip would be 87,163 damage, and then per shot, 24,533. Now that's for the Thanos build. So let's move over to the dual long arm 10 build, and we will see that again, six star level three per clip is going to be 42,385, and then per shot, 8,000. 477 and when we break that out once again for the total damage per clip the dual long arm 10 would be 84,770 and then the single shot damage would be 16,954 so on paper the Thanos build is going to output more damage per clip and per shot now does that mean it wins this category not exactly we also want to look at how all that damage plays out and we want to look at optimal range. So if we look first at the dual long arm 10, because they're the same weapon, they're going to have the same optimal range, which is 105 meters plus, which would be like 105 meters to its max range of 180 meters. So that's a good range, but it's all long range. That's going to be your optimal range. If we look at the Thanos build, Obviously, the long arm eight is going to be the same. It's 105 meters, and then its max range is 180 meters. However, the railgun has a different optimal range. Its optimal range is from zero to 120 meters. That's a huge max range. But that means for the Thanos build, its max range or its optimal range for both weapons is pretty small. It's 105 meters to 120 meters. So it has a smaller ideal or optimal range for both weapons to hit that maximum damage does this mean that the dual long arm 10 is better well this is where things get tricky obviously in the optimal range category and that potential damage it's a little higher but we also have a lot of other things to factor in for example both of these weapons or these loadouts can do overheat now the dual long arm 10 can do it a little more but the damage potential in the thanos build is going to be a little bit higher with overheat and then we also have to factor in the actual range and distance you regularly fight. There are a lot of times you're going to be less than 100 meters, and that's going to affect how all of these weapons perform optimally. We also have to think of the trait of the long arm itself, which is dead eye. That means the further the target is, the more damage the weapon will cause. So that means at 50 meters or 75 or 100 or 100 plus, it's going to output damage differently. This makes it very difficult to try and figure out what your DPS or your time to kill with these weapons is and why it's very difficult to try and figure out where these are going to do better. Obviously, the Thanos build is going to do better at closer ranges and hit more optimal damage. And then the dual long arm 10 is going to do better in that long range sniper build of 105 meters or more for its optimal damage. 
So ultimately, this is really hard to figure out, and uh, I'm not good enough, I think, to figure that stuff out. So for this category, I'm going to slightly lean in favor of the Thanos build because it actually outputs more damage as a whole on paper. I know that's kind of taking the simple way out, and actually there may be more damage potential in the dual longarm 10, but because most of my encounters, at the very least, and most of the, the situational encounters I'm involved in in most matches are not always going to be at that 105 to 180 meters. So you do kind of have to play into what each of these weapon strengths are, and I think at the end of the day, you're going to be getting a little bit more damage out of the Thanos build. Uh, as it says on paper. So for the damage category, I'm going to slightly lean in favor of the Thanos build. And the last category we're going to talk about is usage. This is more about how these two builds perform and what they specialize in and what they're good at. We're going to start with the dual long arm 10 build. This build is definitely a more dedicated sniper build. It is one where even though it's a little bit more cost friendly, it has higher damage potential at its max range. And you want to try to stay at that range and do your sniping with this build as much as you can. Now, that doesn't mean this can't handle targets up close because it is pretty beefy. It can handle most light and medium sized mechs pretty well up close as long as you have a good size clip left. But you definitely will get your most potential at range. You also will want to try to fire your shots individually. Why? Well, because it'll give you more chances of overheat. If you fire both shots at the same time and one of them lands overheat, then that means the other one is not going to get the overheat damage potential. So it's best to try and fire these separately to make sure overheat hits. Now that ultimately means with this build, you're going to need to be super accurate. You're going to be firing a lot individually. You're going to be doing it at range as much as possible. So you hit that max damage potential. And I think that, you know, because this is a manually aiming weapon, I think that can be a little tricky. But if you're a good sniper, this is definitely the build for you. And I think it can work really, really well for you. All right, now let's talk about the Thanos build. If the dual long arm 10 is a dedicated sniper build, the Thanos build is a more flexible sniper build. It also has a lot of burst potential, and I want to talk about the naming for it. I think the name was first said, the Thanos build, by KSO, but the reason to me is based on how it fires. If you've used this weapon, you'll soon realize that the long arm, the long arm 8 bullet travels faster than the railgun bullet. So when you actually shoot both in a single volley, the long arm eight bullet will get to its target faster. Why is that important? Well, because if it hits overheat, the railgun shot will get the benefit of overheat in the same volley. And that means you may be able to dust your target in a snap with a single shot. Now, I don't know if that's the exact reason why it's called the Thanos build, but I heard that on the War Robots forum and I thought it was applicable and fit with how the actual weapon performs. And for that reason, I really love this build. I love the high burst damage potential, and it means that I can do a lot more damage to most targets. It's also one that deals with its targets a little better up close because, like I said, the railgun has a huge optimal range and it can work at zero meters. So even up close, it can handle targets pretty well, even the beefier ones. Uh, I think it handles them a little better, but the downside is that, again, this is not gonna handle things at range as well. The optimal range for both weapons is only 105 to 120 meters. And like I said, their bullet speeds travel differently, so you definitely have to compensate for that the longer your target is away from you. But that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that you have to get used to how that functions and how that works. And again, you're you're basically trading between high damage, long range of the dual long arm 10 versus the flexible damage and burst damage potential that you get out of the Thanos build. And, and this is the hard thing, since both of these have great performance and I would recommend either one to any one. It is hard for me to say who wins this category and who wins it overall. So for me, guys. I'm really gonna have to say that between these two weapon loadouts, it is a tie. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this one. I hope that was helpful to you. These are really difficult builds to nail down and say which one is better. And I think both have a lot of merit and I see people who play really well with both. And I think both are, are worth giving a shot. As you rank up, definitely try the dual long arm 10. It's a great one to get earlier on and then the Thanos build later. But feel free to comment about which you prefer below and any other builds you'd like me to compare. 
and we will see you out there on the battlefield.